In this video, we will show you how to enable SSL offloading for uh, Awingu. Um, as Awingu is 100% web traffic, there are several ways uh, to do this. Uh, you could use an external SSL offloader in front of uh, Awingu. And at that moment, Awingu will not do the SSL offloading. It is your external SSL offloader that uh, takes care of that. We, in, in that case, we need to do a few uh, system settings. Uh, I'm going to show that uh, later on. Uh, the first case I would like to show you is where there is no external SSL offloader in front of Awingu and that Awingu is doing the SSL offloading itself. So as you can see, I'm currently connected to uh, remote uh, awingu.com uh, on, uh, on HTTP. There is no, no HTTPS yet. So if I would like to uh, enable uh, SSL offloading on Awingu, I have to go to the system settings. And as this is something which has, is, has been done on the full uh, appliance level, it's not something on the left side, so per tenant we need to configure, but it's something under global which needs to be configured for the full uh, appliance. Uh, under global, you will see that there is a, a subsection which is called certificates. And if I go over there, this is the place where I can upload my uh, certificates. Uh, from the moment the first certificate is available on, uh, on, on here, uh, the Awingu appliance will automatically be available on uh, SSL. So as long as there are no uh, certificates uploaded in here, it's HTTP. On the moment I upload at least one certificate, it becomes uh, HTTPS. Uh, uploading certificates uh, can be done, um, again, very simple. Click on, uh, on the Add button. And then there are three possibilities to upload certificates. So first of all, if you have a, a, an, an own certificate, so if you have like a, a commercial certificate you bought via a certificate authority, you can upload that either in um, a P, uh, PFX format or in PAM CRT format. So then just uh, upload the, the files uh, in here. Um, Awingu has also the possibility to automatically uh, fetch certificates via Let's Encrypt. Uh, this is a feature which is available to single node Awingu. So this is not something that will work if you have a, a multi-node Awingu, but if you have a single node Awingu, we have done uh, integration with Let's Encrypt and it's very simple to, uh, to get those uh, certificates. So the only thing uh, you would need to do in case of a, of a single node Awingu and you, and you want to use those uh, automatic certificates is uh, specify the uh, host header of Awingu. So in my, in my case, it's uh, remoteawingu.com. Click on, uh, on Add, and uh, Awingu will now connect via the uh, Let's Encrypt API, the Let's Encrypt uh, service. It will ask for remote awingu.com uh, a public certificate. And then once that is uh, once then that has been issued, Awingu will install it and configure it and make it available uh, in the configuration. Important is that uh, the needed network connectivity for that is in place. So the Awingu needs to have uh, outgoing HTTPS access to the Let's Encrypt API. And then very important, the Let's Encrypt API needs to validate if we are the owner of that uh, domain. So it will check on HTTP, so on port 80, if, uh, if there is a, a valid um, authentication code on the, uh, on the Awingu appliance. So if uh, the Let's Encrypt API can then connect over HTTP, um, the Awingu appliance, um, it will install the, the certificate automatically for us. So important to have this working, both HTTP and HTTPS needs to be redirected to the uh, Awingu appliance. Uh, if this is the case, and, and uh, it just takes like uh, 10, 15 seconds, you will see that I have in the meanwhile uh, a public certificate for, uh, for Awingu. So what I will do now is I will connect, uh, disconnect from uh, HTTP and I will go to HTTPS uh, remote uh, Awingu Dot com, and I will uh, connect via HTTPS to my uh, environment. So as you can see, this is a real certificate I got via Let's Encrypt. It's not a self-signed certificate. It's a real trusted end-to-end uh, -end, uh, certificate which is uh, available. Um, important now is that um, I don't want that uh, people can still connect over HTTP. So although the, the firewall port is still open, um, I don't want that people can connect to Awingu over HTTP. I want that if somebody connects on HTTP, he's automatically redirected to HTTPS. So this is another setting I need to do. So if I go to the uh, system settings and then to global connectivity, there is a, a section over here, which is called the SSL offloader. And for the moment, it's set to optional HTTPS. So what we can do now is uh, specify that I'm using the internal SSL offloader with enforced HTTPS. And that means that on the moment I enable this, uh, it's no longer possible to connect on HTTP to Awingu. You will be automatically redirected to HTTPS. I've also mentioned earlier 
that uh, Awingu can be perfectly configured behind an external SSL offloader. So in case you're using an external SSL offloader, it's also important to set in here that uh, for the SSL offloader, we're not using then at that moment the internal SSL offloader, but then an external SSL offloader. By doing so, Awingu knows that there is an SSL offloader in front of Awingu, and it will, for example, no longer accept uh, um, non-secure cookies and, and these kinds of, uh, of things. So in my case, it's the internal SSL offloader, which I have now uh, activated. Um, one thing you also need to know in case you're using an external SSL offloader is um, that Awingu needs to be aware of that. So it's not only uh, for, for security uh, things that it's important to configure that correct, but also in the auditing part, we need to let Awingu know that there is an external SSL offloader in front of Awingu. If you don't do that, it will look like from the dashboard that all the connections are coming from your reverse uh, proxy. So if you have an external reverse proxy, which, which is not the case in this demonstration, but uh, if you would use that uh, on, on your configuration, then it's, uh, it's important that uh, over here, so if you go to global connectivity, uh, there is a section which is called external reverse proxies. So if you have uh, an external reverse proxy, then it's important that you uh, specify in here the uh, external, uh, the IP address of the proxy server so that at least Awingu is aware that there is an external proxy in front of it and that uh, all connections that are coming over the proxy server will have their original source IP addresses and not the connection from the proxy server.